Hi hey everybody, how's it going? I uh, accidentally replaced my PNG to herself with my VTuber self. Spin that sentence right back around and you'll have what I meant to say originally. Now, I realized last time... So, in, in case you missed the title, this is a stream where I'm going to be trying to make a live 2D model for a character I designed not too long ago. Um... I have done one of these streams before. I did one of these streams last week, I think. Sometime last week, sometime not too long ago, like I said. And what I've noticed is that <laughs> when I did that stream, I got really like frustrated. I, I got weirdly frustrated in that stream. And I think what happened is that I just stopped having fun doing it, which is why I got so frustrated with it. So um, this time around, I'm going to switch it up. I'm going to switch it up in two ways, two significant ways. All right. Switch up number one. If I get tired of drawing the Live 2D model, I am going to take a quick little break and I am going to switch to making a, you know, just not even switching to anything. I'm just going to make a new layer and I'm just going to doodle for a little bit, you know, do a little bit of goofing. Um, that's that's promise number one. That's that's I feel like that's going to help me not get ass bored of this so quickly. It's not even that I get bored, I think I just get frustrated and that's just not very helpful, you know, uh, as a behavior when you're trying to learn. Promise number two is actually something much more exciting. I realized last time that I did this that the way that I usually do things, which is to say, you know, vector layer, line art, etc., isn't gonna cut it for life to d um, You know, I, the, the reason that I use vector layers and do things the way I do is not just out of, you know, partly is it is out of because it is out of habit, you know, that's just how I've always done things. So that's how I'm going to keep doing them. And that's why I thought, you know, if I can apply that style to a live 2D model, that would be something incredible. But the fact of the matter is the way that I do things just is not the most efficient or fun way that I could be doing them. So this time around, I'm going to be trying to do a little bit something different instead of, um, you know, I'm going to try and make slightly more detailed sketches. So that way, when I am actually drawing the model, what I'm going to be able to do is actually going to block out things in color and then kind of consistently draw the line work over them. I think this is going to help in two ways. One, it's going to help me do layers faster, which is going to help me kind of not sit, not get so frustrated. And two, it's actually going to help me become a little bit more flexible with the symmetrical style, I feel, because if I block things out in color, I feel like it, it'll just be a little bit easier and a little bit faster compared to how I was doing it before. So that's kind of the two main changes that we're going to be applying. So uh, let's get right over to the working screen so we can start putting them in action. You know, saying... Saying we're going to change things up is one thing. Actually changing things up is quite the quite another. Okay. Uh, I don't have CSP open on this thing. That might be a problem. Hang on. Uh, where's the... Here it is. Okay. I should drink some water, actually. Okay, yeah, that does also mean, however, that we're pretty much going to have to be restarting progress on all this, which sucks, but I, I, I'm not that mad, honestly. I, I wasn't happy with how it was coming out in the first place, so I think starting over is going to give, me, give us a good kind of uh, starting point. You know, it's, it's like a fresh start for everything. So, Gale Model V2. Uh, that's step one. I'm, I'm, I'm currently setting up the canvas. Give me a minute. <laughs> Hang on, I'm still setting it up. There we go. Yeah, I think in general, just having that much more loose style is going to help a lot. 
Okay, so part one is gonna be. I think the reference image for the original can kind of stay the same. Uh, the the model itself, I'm gonna try and change a little. So first of all, bigger hips. Promise myself that much. Uh, what is? Like, it, I want to have, like, weirdly wide... It, I want to have, like, a kind of hourglass figure, and that means, like, also making the shoulders kind of big. Okay. Very kind of lanky legs. Long, lanky arms. And then... If, I can edit the whole body a little bit, you know, just a little bit more meat on them bones. Okay, and then height, much taller. <laughs> we want somebody much taller than that. God. Uh, recently, I've been getting into the habit of putting my entire music library on shuffle. Uh, it's not something that I actually usually do. Um, for some reason, I've been really into, you know, for the past few years, something that I've been really into is actually playing my, play, like listening to an entire album, and then once I'm finished with that album, switching to another album. It is a system that has served me well. But I am going to say that, like, I got tired of it after a little bit, and, you know, instead of adding to my already, like, 600 plus song playlist, I decided to just start shuffling every song in my library, which has resulted in some interesting kind of things that I found out about myself. One, um, once upon a time, I downloaded the entire. Hang on, I'm gonna try to figure out like let ruler frame create perspective ruler. I'm trying to figure out how I can set like a perfect symmetry ruler. File object selection from layer. Let me look this up on Google so that I can figure out if there's actually a way to do this. Anyway, uh, make perfect symmetry. Uh, CSP. Why do I draw with symmetry? Okay, it does seem to just have a symmetry ruler part, but I don't see like a... Uh... Hmm. Okay, yeah, no, I don't think, I, I think we're just going to have to kind of uh, base it off of the middle of this mannequin here. Anyway, one, th one, th one thing about my, uh, <laughs> that, I, that I've unfortunately noticed about my music taste. It's not even an unfortunate thing, it's more like a goofy thing that happened. Um, oh, wait, I've got an idea. Okay, I'm going to make a big folder and I'm going to make a ruler kind of apply to the entire, I don't know if it's possible to make a ruler apply to the entire folder. I'm gonna try. Create a perspective ruler. One point perspective. Okay, I don't think I don't think it is possible actually. Hmm. Unless I don't know. Is there a way to like make sure that every layer has one ruler, or do we just have to kind of keep passing it around, so to speak? I've been thinking about like the best way I can tackle live 2D stuff because again, I don't want to turn any of my art streams into something where I'm where you know whatever whatever I'm making is pretty glorious, but what but it is also just not fun to make. That is the last thing I want to do. So a lot of this is of course just me going like ha ha hoo hoo can I make this funnier? But also it's just me trying to go like, okay, what's the best way I can actually accomplish what I want? knowing the way my brain is wired. You know, that's not e oh, that's not always easy. <laughs> Creative editing layer. Okay. Let's try this. Right down the middle. Okay. 
Oh wait, we can make it on the folder. And then, okay, wait, if I, if I just go on any layer, yes, okay, this is exactly what I wanted. Okay, um, yeah, I'm, I'm still trying to think about like how this is gonna work. I like how you can tell whenever I'm like rubbing the bridge of my nose, in because I'm trying to think. That's that's a habit that I have. Like whenever I'm kind of frustrated or, or when I try to think, I tend to rub the bridge of my non-existent nose. <laughs> But uh, when that happens, it actually starts interfering with the face facial capture, so it just looks like I'm not talking. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that one looks looks like I'm just having like a little brain fart. It's always been funny to me that that's like the go-to phrase for, you know, like that and that kind of like emotion, a brain fart. It's not. It's not even like I don't have a problem with the phrase at all. It just feels weirdly appropriate in how inappropriate it is. Like. It's, it's brain fart is not something you say in polite company, but the instant I heard the phrase, I was like, okay, yeah, I know exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I think it's just one of those things that just has a tremendous resonance. <laughs> hmm. I'm also going to try to brighten up some of these layer parts because, all right, first of all, do I want to have like a triangle for this? I'm not sure. Who's farting? Nobody. Hey, Leo. Yeah, uh, I was talking about the phrase brain fart because it's one of those phrases where like it's very crass, but at the same time, when you say it, everybody knows exactly what you're talking about. Okay, wait, rectangle. Where's the like oh here we go, polygon. But yeah, how you been, Leo? Okay. Alright, I need to make this outside of the symmetry folder. Okay, and there we go. Oh yeah, I was also talking about like um no, I think I should probably do this in the symmetry layer, just in case. That being said, there has to be a better way to do this. I mean, I could just use a triangle ruler. Gonna look through the house for bolts because I lost ones for the mic. Oh, shit. I hope you find them then. Gee, uh, God. My family is very guilty of doing this one, of the, of doing this one specific thing. We call it el cajón del nunca jamás. Which, it, which loosely translated means the the drawer of never ever. <laughs> or, like, to give you an idea, El País del Nunca Jamás is the, is, is the name for Neverland in, in Spanish, I think. So, the, so whenever you throw something into that, that uh, what do you call it, the drawer, El Cajón del Nunca Jamás, it's gone. <laughs> Like, unless you specifically, like, you put it there to forget it. <laughs> yeah. And that's not necessarily a bad thing, you know? Like, it, it's almost like a an emergency tool for finding stuff. Because if you know that the stuff in there is almost probably never going to come up, you, if you have something like that, my dad's an electrician and he has his shit in spots around the house, there should be bolts, two bolts somewhere. Hmm, that's true. Yeah, I remember what, for some reason I have this, I think like this just tends to happen to manifest at any dude's house. Uh, you know, one of those things about tradition, one of the things about traditional masculinity that I actually kind of like is the fact that guys are just expected to have tools around the house. Because I love having like shiny metal objects and tools around the house. It, ju it just makes me feel very prepared. And I have this box of screws that I have all, I don't think I've ever used, but I just keep them around because I just know that someday I'll need them. Is this hoarder behavior? Perhaps. But will I feel vindicated when I finally find a use of them? Oh, yes. But yeah, I hope you find some screws soon, dude. Hmm. Is there... I think I have an idea for how to do this. I feel like my dad brings me random shiny nails he finds. 
<laughs> he he's, he's like a crow. Yeah, bringing somebody to shiny stuff is a love language, I think. Not necessarily a <laughs> tidy one, but it is. God. Oh, oh, that's interesting. I didn't. Okay, so it also turns the way that the brush is held. That's something that I hadn't realized. I'm learning a lot about the symmetry ruler today. I feel like I'm gonna learn a lot about it before the day is done. It's hilarious that I that I did make my own live 2D model, but I hardly remember anything about the process because like almost none of my lines are symmetrical. <laughs> that is by design, by the way. That's not like that's not like that wasn't a skill issue particularly. I could have made myself perfectly symmetrical. Oh, do you know about ruler snapping? Yeah, I do actually. Um, I have it turned off because I don't want it. Well, I don't think I can turn it on for a symmetrical ruler. But yeah, I, I know the one you're talking about, I think. Also, am I just going to keep making this triangle bigger? <laughs> I think I might. I need to like tone it down at some point. I think after past a certain point, I just need to tone it down. Uh, erase, correction, enable snapping. Here we go. This should, yeah, there we go. That's the one thing they don't talk about when making live 2D. Mm. Yeah, you know, like, making rigging models in Life 2D is hard enough without having to deal with the 17 metric tons of bullshit, which is making the actual fucking model. <laughs> yeah. Like, like I said, the, the model that I'm currently rocking, the current form, the vessel that I inhabit, uh, isn't particularly symmetrical, so... <laughs> That never actually became a really a problem for me. It did become a bit of a problem when I was rigging it, but, you know, I was already kind of winging the whole thing, so it wasn't really that big of a loss. Oh, you know what I could do as well? I could just kind of like go like this. Mm. Okay, that's pretty good, but I, I actually kind of want to make it smoother. Okay, I think that's good enough for now. Uh, no, no, this is, it's bugging me that the top part is kind of iffy like that. But that's fine, I got an idea for how to fix that. Never, okay, that's not what I meant to do, but that's also a solution. <laughs> I feel like that's a running theme throughout my life. Like, I, I do something on accident that is also a solution to the problem, but it's n not at all what I meant to do. I just go around making problems go away, and some, uh, and some, but just never in the way that I intended to. I feel like that's almost a talent in and of itself. You know, like, I get shit done, but I just don't know how I do it. <laughs> It's not so much incompet incompetence as it is, like, just dumb luck and a go-getter spirit. I'm making myself sound really bad, but I promise I'm saying this in a positive way. Like, that's the thing, right? Like, uh, sometimes I, I make jokes about, like, me b being kind of like a chaotic, bumbling mess. And I need you to understand that every single time I, like, do that, it's with a little heart followed by it, you know? I, I love... I, I have no issue with self-love. I just recognize that a lot of a lot of my life wouldn't have happened if I were nearly as unlucky... as, as lucky as I am now. Oh yeah, speaking of funny stuff. So, I've got this video recommended to me, right? Um, it was for this program called Ubuntu, or Ubuntu. So if you don't know about... Okay, so, okay. First of all, let me na name, name this layer, and then I'll start talking about this thing. Uh, triangle Head. Okay. And I am going to label this blue, because it's a secret tool that'll help us later. Anyway. Uh, if you've never heard of Ubuntu, 
Um, Ubuntu is a freeware operating system. So you know how you have to like pay for Windows 10 and 11 and everything? Um, yeah, Ubuntu isn't like that. Um, you can, it's basically a free program operating system. And it's, it's pretty cool because it's like very widely supported for something that's essentially a very indie project. Yeah, I, I've never used Ubuntu. I've never had like the guts to install it, but I know one of my friends in middle school actually installed it. He was um, he was a bit older than me, so that's why he he had, he probably had like the guts to do it. Uh, okay, I'm gonna call this Belly because that's what this part here is gonna be. Yeah. Anyway, so Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a free is like a free to use. Uh operating system like windows and everything and like i said it's very it's one of the more popular ones which means it has a like a lot of documentation a lot of support for pe from people who also use it and you know that's really good that's really useful for if you want to like you know everybody has their own reasons for not wanting to use windows you know the constant desire for upgrade the constant heckling for upgrades the fact that you don't want to switch over to Linux, the fact that Macs are too expensive. <laughs> so you kind of like just suck it up with Windows. Um, but it's good to have alternatives like that, I think. It's necessary and useful. I'm very much li living the two Christmas ornaments. I'm very much living the two, loving the two Christmas ornaments filled with jingle bells tied together with masking tape. I, huh? Yeah, hi. Uh, what? What are you talking about? <laughs> what? 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 What Christmas ornaments? I don't. <laughs> jingle bells tied together with masking tape. I think I've been good. How about you? <laughs> I'm just confused. <laughs> it's good to hear that you're doing well, though. I'm happy. I'm happy that you're doing fine. Okay, let's see here. Uh, anyway, yeah, I was talking about Ubuntu. So Ubuntu is an alternative system, and some dude. I don't know why I got this in my YouTube recommendeds, but I'm very glad I did. Some dude found a kind of joke version of Ubuntu called Ubuntu. And it, it, it spelled like, hang on, it is spelled like Ubuntu. And it's very obviously like supposed to be like a troll thing. <laughs> I, 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 I don't, I, apparently it was made by two students, right? And they, they say that they've been using it as like their main operating system ever since they made it. I'm willing to believe that because it didn't seem like necessarily bad. It just seemed very funny. <laughs> anyway, yeah, so this guy installed it. Apparently it's not too bad uh, from what I saw. Like it did seem a little bit slower than most operating systems. Although that may have been because... I don't have confirmation that he did this, but I imagine the dude who was making the video showcasing the operating system um i imagine he ran it on like a burner computer or something like a computer that he didn't care if it got wrecked by the shitty operating system <laughs> because let's be honest if you're in downloading entire operating systems from the internet i th i feel like you almost have to be prepared to get your to get a virus every other day of your life You know, that, that's just kind of like the card that you're dealt. <laughs> anyway, that reminded me of, the, of this thing that I looked up the other day, right? Uh, they're called e ESOLangs. Uh, that's short for Esoteric Programming Languages. So much like how there are conlangs in real life. I say real life. This is also a thing that's in real life. It's just abstract, like a because it's pro computer programming. So a conlang is a made-up language with real kind of like uh, rules. So Esperanto is one of them. 
Um, I know Tokipona is another one. Tokipona is actually one of my favorites because it's supposed it's supposed to be like an extremely simplified vocabulary, which I think is really neat. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna call this uh what do you call um body base or top base top fill okay and i'm gonna call this next part uh neck front yeah anyway so conlangs much like how there are conlangs for actual languages, there are also esolangs, which are which are esoteric programming languages, which are fake 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 programming languages that work. So if you run code with an esolang, it'll work. Like it'll one hundred percent work. It just might not be very um, intuitive. To give you an idea, one of the esolangs that I that I studied was called the brain fuck and <laughs> so here's a fun thing um when you have a programming language you have to one of the like mo most common ways to show off your programming language is to write hello world so Usually, like an example of how, of how to make something is to just make the computer say "Hello World" with your programming language of choice. <laughs> and hang on, let me try and find something like this. Yeah, so here we go. Uh, I'm gonna open up a browser window here. So yeah, here's an example of using BrainFuck to write hello world. <laughs> so I think like it starts right around here. So I don't know if you can see that very well. I don't think it shows up very well on stream, but it's just a really awful little thing that it is. I love stuff like this. I because what I had like a a high school class, right? Uh, theory of knowledge, it was called. It, it was basically like an intro to philosophy, and you know, kind of like a more how do you call it? Like like logical arguments, almost. I don't know how to how else to put it. It's like it is very much tied with philosophy i think like as much as my as the professor vehemently denied it it was basically like a baby's first philosophy class but it was actually kind of interesting at a lot of at a lot of turns and one of the topics that we discussed in that class was actually what the definition of art was and eventually the kind of defin weirdly enough they didn't let us define our own make our own definition of art they actually gave us a definition that we had to discuss, like we had to use as a lens to discuss art. So the definition that they give us is that art is a, like it's something that's done intentionally, but doesn't have a use, if that makes sense. So you can't just make art on accident. Like you can't just make something useless on accident. And, you know, even if that looks nice, it's not technically art because you didn't do it on purpose, which is one of the defining characteristics of art. So that's the kind of definition that they gave us to work with. You know, it's something that is that has no other use besides existing. And how do you say this? Like, yeah, like it has no other use besides existing. And it, um, I don't remember what the third part was. It it has it exists without purpose, and it cannot have a use because it's it's a little bit like that, that idea of like that. Um, have you guys ever seen that one urinal that's been submitted as an art piece? The entire reason that it's an art piece is because somebody both took it out of its normal usage, which is being a urinal, 
and made sure that nobody could, like that nobody used it as a urinal if that makes sense because if it, if it isn't if if it if it was used as a urinal still that would just be a urinal that you put in the middle of the museum it's still fundamentally a urinal <laughs> Conversely, because nobody can pee in it anymore, it's no longer a urinal. It's got it. Do, it's lost its original purpose and is now technically art. This is all to circle back to the point to, that I was trying to make originally, which is that I th believe sincerely that the, that stuff like this, like that e these ESO langs and con langs and everything, are very much an art. Okay, how am I gonna do this though? Okay, so the way I'm I'm thinking of this right is I'm gonna call this arm R or no to torso R. Oh yeah, another another e ESO language which is much less vulgar than <laughs> brain fuck is actually called Piet. And that one's actually very charming because you can actually make art with it. Um, it's supposed to be a language that when it's run looks like abstract art, which it looks really nice actually. I, I really like how it looks. If you look at the Wikipedia page for it, it's rather lovely to look at. Okay, I'm gonna put this right here and then like this. Now you may say, but Pabs, not all of the jacket is, uh, is that kind of like red color. Why are you making that, that, all that kind of red color? Well, that's because I'm going to make a bunch of layers on top of this one, and I'm going to use this one as a kind of as a kind of like selection layer for the places that I'm going to paint over. Hang on. The only thing that worries me about using these brushes is that they might become see-through at certain points, but I'll burn that bridge when I cross it. Besides, this looks pretty solid to me. I, I think it's going to be barely noticeable, but I will maybe like give it a copy and paste over itself once or twice just to make sure that it's not going to um, come back to bite me. That's something that's always bugged me about stuff like uh, about not using like solid brushes, if that makes sense, that... If, if you don't do it properly, if you don't, like, pay way too close... Like, I don't mind. I like having an eye for detail when I'm the one who initiates it. If it's something that you have to have an eye for detail for, like, as a requirement, it feels very annoying. That That's kind of, like, my, my philosophy of things. I'm happy to have an eye for detail as long as it's not required. I don't know why, but... It, it, you know what? If you like take out the the factor of it being fun of being of it being optional, it just stops being like. I think it's because you know sincerely, and again, this is gonna make myself sound kind of bad, but I feel like it's almost because you know if I'm the one choosing to have an eye for detail, that makes me feel good because that that means I've taken autonomy. I've made the conscious choice to be more careful to have that kind of. Uh, attention to detail but because but when it's required it's just kind of annoying because you know that's no longer a thing that i've done because i wanted to do it that's just a thing that needs to be done and if i do it badly there will be consequences okay oh, yeah speaking of weird programming stuff apparently there's a new anime made by the studio trigger that came out based on the cyberpunk IP called Edge Runners. I've been meaning to watch it actually because I I really like the what I saw from the trailer of it. It seemed very interesting. It also seemed extremely gory and violent, but you know I think I think I can handle it if it's cool enough. I still need to finish watching Brand New Animal. <laughs> I never finished watching Brand New Animal. I feel like I should finish doing that at some point. <laughs> Yeah, 
I actually kind of like the kind of opening to Brand New Animal. Like, it, it's... How do I put it? What? Hmm. Like, I, I was intrigued by Brand New Animal, but at the same time, whenever, like, there's a property that has, like, this... That has a very clear... I don't know how to put it. Like... Whenever there's a property that has, like, allusions to real-world prejudice through a fantasy abstractions, it raises a couple of red flags for me. <laughs> not not because, like, I, I'm not comfortable with, with those topics. Like, I feel like prejudice is something that should be spoken about and needs to be acknowledged in general. But w when it's, like, done through, like, the lens of, like, a herbivore, carnivore, animal shit, like, it just feels a little bit weird. <laughs> Right. I mean, that's my take. Obvi obviously, everybody is going to have a different kind of uh, opinion on this, as they should, because you know, not everybody is going to see the world the same way. I just feel like it, I just feel uncomfortable with it, exploring it through that specific medium. Okay, and I'm gonna just make a quick little thing right here to make that kind of triangular th shape here. Okay, and then I am going to have to make a layer below this for the right arm. So I'm going to call this shoulder arm. Yeah, funny enough, I, <laughs> I wasn't actually, you know, whenever people talk about cyberpunk nowadays, the most obvious example that comes to mind is Cyberpunk 2077, not because it's a particularly good example of the cyberpunk genre, it's not, but <laughs> because it is just like the fact that it flopped as badly as it did, given everything that happened, is just so, so, so funny. <laughs> the thing is, I don't did did like, I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what qualifies as flopping. Like they definitely did not sell as many copies of the game as they wanted to sell, but I think I, I think it was still technically a commercial success. I don't know. I don't know if it was. I don't. I didn't keep too much track of that game. I I still don't really care too much about it because I think I watched my friend play it like for 30 minutes one time on a live stream, and that was kind of like all my exposure to the game. It kind of sucks that they flop that hard. Eh. I mean, yeah, you can take a look at it from multiple perspectives. Yeah, hey, Derek, how you doing? Yeah, I, I feel like there are multiple perspectives you can take on it. From a kind of karmic perspective, I think it is funny that it flopped that hard because I feel like that game had a lot of controversy around it. I remember there being a lot of controversy around that game. I... It, it, it just handled some sensitive topics very insensitively. I, f I think that's kind of how it, that's kind of how it went. I think. I think it must have been a bunch of other things as well. But in general, it just kind of flopped very hard. And you know, from one perspective, that's almost like sweet, sweet karma. But from another perspective, that sucks for the people who actually worked on it and were basically forced to do crunch time on that game, because you know regardless of their own feelings about their project, that's still their effort. That's still their work that went into that game. And if it flopped, then that means that the, all that effort and all those kinds of, like, that just tremendous amount of effort went to waste. Which kind of sucks. <laughs> I, it, it, it's a complicated situation, like I said. There are multiple perspectives you can have on it. Okay, so I'm going to call this Forearm R. If I can remember how to spell Forearm. I don't know. Let me take a look at the, um, what do you call it? The... 
Hang on, I have a thing that shows like, yeah, life to the hierarchy. Yeah, this thing. I try to keep this thing ha handy whenever I'm both drawing and rigging life to the models because it helps me kind of keep an idea of how the shape should be arranged. Unfortunately, I forgot I, for I forgot to like say the name of the person who made this. I remember I got this from Twitter, but I forgot who made it and I need to figure out who did that so I can give them <laughs> my kindest and warmest regards for saving my life. <laughs> okay. Shoulder R for what's this called? Like Okay, elbow R. Why not? You know, I don't need to call it elbow R, but I feel like having that kind of You know, if there's a system in place, it's a lot easier for me. Okay, and I'm gonna kind of uh I should probably like lower the opacity of this part here. Yeah, I feel like working lineless art has been much better for this. I, I, might, I might change my tune once I actually start adding line art, but it, I, th I feel like so far, so good. You know, I, I feel good. I feel like in control. I feel powerful. Yeah. Yeah, I was reading earlier, you know, some statistics on like, you know, the media and entertainment industry and, you know, you have, you have, you have Netflix, you have like, all of a sudden I feel like drawing something nice. I'm, gl I'm, I'm glad I inspired that feeling in you. If, if, if I, th I think I did, at least, if not, then ni nice work on getting that impulse by yourself. But yeah, feel free, feel free to draw along or something. I love... I love make I love seeing people make art. Any ideas on what to draw? Uh, I don't know what what is like to the left of your right hand. Like what what's an object close to your hand, and whatever that is, figure out how to turn that into a futuristic item. <laughs> There, Art, cha Art Challenges by Pavs, volume number one. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. What what did you get? Like, is there anything beside your your right hand to the left? Because I've just got a normal pen to my to the right of my to the left of my hand. It's got this weird kind of like grip on it. I I have this tendency to make like these huge grips on my pen. So I, I, you'd, I'd have like a normal pen, right? Like this. Pretend that is a pen, a futuristic mouse. Yeah, exactly. Like draw, <laughs> draw one of those like really exaggerated like gamer mouse mice that have like two million buttons. Anyway, um, <laughs> I, you know, I, what I tend to do is that I take a normal pen like this, and I tend to like get a huge bit of like plastic foam or package wrapping or whatever. And I wrap it around the the the, mount, the pen like this, you know, with duct tape, and that widens the grip significantly. And it honestly helps me quite a bit to avoid like really like developing what I like to call the grotesque artist's grappling. I, I'm trying to figure out like how to call it. It's like like a claw shape that I, that you make with your hand. And you need to try to avoid that a little bit because it leads to repetitive stress injuries, you know, just having your wrist in that kind of constant amount of tension. Which isn't good. You shouldn't you should try to avoid wrist injuries if 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 you haven't in case you missed it, you should try to avoid wrist injuries. <laughs> okay. So hmm. Okay, so this is going to be hand R. Yeah, the good thing is that with th with this jacket at least, I can just, you know, the idea is to have the model having the helmet right around here. 
So what I could do is I could just like flip around the shape, the component parts of this on separate layers and then figure it out from there. I should drink some water. Yeah, I know a buddy of mine has one of those like a uh, very cool like futuristic vertical mice. But I, I think my dad has one of those too for his uh, for his home office setup. I need to get me some of those. I don't know how good they would be for gaming, but let's be honest, I, I'm not I'm not like I don't take gaming seriously enough that I need like pro gamer stuff. You know. I, I got bamboozled into buying a gamer chair because, yeah, so fun facts, fun fact, if you go shopping for like a desk chair, try to avoid, if humanly possible, avoiding getting a gamer chair. Unless you, unless you like really love the aesthetic and you want it to complement your room, do try to avoid getting a gamer chair because I got bamboozled into buying one. I read, I, I was reading articles on the best kind of desk, home desk setups. And one of them mentioned like, hey, have you tried to think, have you thought about like getting a gamer chair? I am a Dell Inspiron gamer. I don't know what that is. Let me Google that. <laughs> I'm going to Google that real quick. Is that a computer type? It might be. Oh, yeah, it's a, oh, it's one of those laptops. Yeah, okay. I, th I did think it was a laptop. Oh, it's a gaming laptop. Nice. Yeah, good on you. I um, I, I I used to live stream from a Lenovo IdeaPad. Um, I, I th it was either the ThinkPad or the IdeaPad. Um, I really liked it. I I had a great time with that computer. A very annoying tendency to recommend me McAfee antivirus, but hey, what can you do? Well, it's not a gaming laptop. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no laptop is really like a gaming laptop. Let's be honest. It's not a gaming laptop, but it's a laptop. <laughs> yeah, that, that that's what you need to write on like the eBay vent on the eBay listing if you ever get if you ever try, decide to sell it. I'm a potato gamer. Yeah, I I, I we've all been there, I think. <laughs> most of us has been have been there to some extent. Yeah, I don't think like you know, I think most people are potato gamers until like they un until like they decide that gaming is their hobby or uh, something that they want to have like as a passion. In which case, they do get a nice kind of gaming computer. Yeah, I didn't. When I was getting my computer, I got it from one of those websites. I got mine from this place called um, Stoneforge IT, I think. And. Uh, you know, it's one of those like websites where they build you your computer from the parts that you choose. You know, I, I, I'd recently gotten a job at that point and I really wanted to spring for something nice. When I was when I was like deciding on the components for my computer, I wasn't just thinking about gaming, but I was also thinking about like, you know, art stuff, because you actually do need very powerful computers to run some Blender stuff. You know, I remember my, my uh, lap, my laptop, the Lenovo used to actually kind of struggle with um some with like blender at, after a certain point because you know surprise surprise advanced 3d modeling programs even freeware ones can be quite taxing on the old hard drive but yeah no god i remember that i try to play fallout 4 at release you know Fallout, Fall, I can't believe that Fallout 4 came out in 2016. I don't know why, like, oh, I don't know how to put it. Fallout 4 is one of those games, for a lot of games that came out in, like, 2016, I still feel like they're relatively new games. I don't know how to put it, like, I have something of an odd sense of time. So when you tell me that a game came, came like, I still, I think that game, I remember hearing about games coming out in 2016, and I still think that those are, like, new games. You know, I still consider those to be new games. Not because, like, you know, I, I'm, I'm, like, looking at the entire span of time or anything, but mainly because, like, I, I kind of just forget the passage of time to the extent that I, I still believe that, like, stuff like, I don't know, what, what else came out in 2016? I don't remember. 
Yeah, like, like for example, like, um... Oh, right, okay. So, the other day I was building a Gundam model called the Barbados Lupus Rex. That happens to me with Dune 2016. That is a fantastic example. So yeah, even though Doom 2016 came out so long ago that, you know, as its name implies, six years ago now, and yeah, 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 exactly, like, Doom 16 came out six years ago and now has a sequel, and I still feel like it's a brand new game. I have played Doom 2016 and it still feels like a brand new game. Like, I feel like it just released. I don't know if that's just because of the production values or what, but it, I just kind of have that tendency to kind of like forget that stuff has been released until like somebody points out that, hey, no, that was actually a while ago. Like I was talking about the Barbados Lupus Rex because I remember that the Iron Blooded Orphans, which is where that came from. I've not actually seen any any Gundam stuff, but I remember people talking about Iron Blooded Orphans because it was new. Iron Blooded Orphans came out in 2016, and I was like, oh yeah, that's like one of the more recent Gundam things, right? And they were like, it came out in 2016. I'm like, it came out in what? <laughs> I have one, I have... Yeah, I, I have, I have that, I, that is one of my, uh... Time, observing the t passage of time issues. <laughs> I will earnestly believe stuff is brand spanking new until somebody points out, like, no, it isn't. I think that, that happened to me for a while with, like, anime as well. Like, I was like, oh, yeah. Uh, I, <laughs> yeah, I remember that, like, uh, fucking... Which one was it? Uh... Which one was it? Uh... I don't remember which one. Uh, but yeah, I, I, that happens to me with like media and stuff as well, uh, particularly anime, I think. I don't keep up with anime as much as I used to, because, not because like I've lost any love for it, but I mean, I have a little bit, but mostly because like I just have not been as in love with like, how do you call it, like long form? It's not even long form. It's like just a normal TV size serialized format. I, I, I've started watching more live streams and listening to more podcasts as kind of like my main avenues of entertainment. And while that has resulted in some fantastically funny comments, you know, I, I, for a long time I listened to this one podcast called The Dollop, which had a history, which had like things from American history, which I thought was pretty nice. Um, yeah, I don't listen to that anymore, but, uh, um, I used to learn all kinds of stuff with that, and, you know, I've started to realize, hey, I don't listen to nearly as, I don't still watch, like, nearly as much TV or anime or any kind of, like, long-form media anymore, and I do wonder when that happened, because it was definitely, like, before COVID, like, it's not like COVID ruined my attention span, I don't think... Well, it didn't ruin it any more than it was already ruined. <laughs> but yeah, I think like sometime around like 2019, I actually kind of fell off the the wagon because I remember when I in 2018 I first got Netflix and I managed to binge watch and, and just like generally keep up with like long form TV shows. I remember I watched um, Baki, the 2018 run of Baki. Um, on Netflix, and I had a great time with that. Until, like, they got to the... Until, like, they got to the... That Chinese tournament arc. That was... That arc was kind of garbage. <laughs> I, it had, like, a name, like, the Raiten Taisei or something. I was, I was watching Attack on Titan, then forgot which episode I was watching. Mm -hmm. Yeah... Even even before I learned, like the creator of Attack on Titan was like some kind of neo-Nazi goon creep, I <laughs> I still wasn't super interested in it. So I, I never got into Attack on Titan. Then I just forgot about it for a while. <laughs> mm. That does happen as well. Like it's not even that you like don't get, aren't in the mood for it anymore. It's just that you forget about it for a while. No life gets in the way. It happens. Mm. 
I need like a slightly crunchier eraser. Yeah, for some reason, I'm not a big fan of, like, stuff that's, like, too emotionally intensive. Like, I've never been one for, like, dramas and such. So that's kind of why I, I didn't gravitate to Attack on Titan back when it was still super popular. I, I wonder if I'm a bad person for hoping that it just pulls a Game of Thrones and gets an ending so bad that everybody who actually, who actually liked it hates it forever. <laughs> I remember everybody was super fucking annoying about the Attack on Titan for a while. <laughs> because... I feel like for a lot of stuff that it it ended up with Nazis. Yeah, no, like... Like I said, it, it, even before I found out that uh, the creator of Attack on Titan was like, a, was like a Nazi super creep. I wasn't super interested in it. Oh, wait, you mean like actual literal Nazis running around? Yeah, that tracks. Yeah. Pulled an FMA 03. I am fucking fascinated to hear what happened in an FMA 2003 to, for you to be able to say that shit because... God. <laughs> what the hell happened in Full Metal Alchemist 2003? <laughs> I remember that, like, the reason it, that Full Metal Alchemist 2000, like, everybody says, like, watch Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. I told you don't watch it after a certain point. Mm, that's fair. You did tell me that. I do remember you telling me that. Yeah. God. I thought that, like, when I was first watching anime, you know, I, I started out watching anime on a completely legal streaming website that I found by chance one day and I I want I looked up like a list right I looked up a list of which anime was popular and naturally Full Metal Alchemist was like at the top of the, that list but the thing was at the time I hadn't I didn't have like a concept of like you know I was still kind of young so I didn't have a concept of like the idea that a show could be about the same thing but also come out later like wrapping my head about around the idea that yeah they made it they they made an, a serialized anime about this show about this manga but then they had to do it again later because like for some reason the first serialization wasn't popular like i had a super hard time wrapping my head around that concept and the only good thing from fma03 is scar <laughs> you say with the horniest emoji i've seen in my life God. Yeah. Anyway, I couldn't wrap my head around that. So I, I just saw like FMA and Full Metal Alchemist and Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. But I think I just remember like seeing a bunch of other animes and realizing that whenever like they had a similar name but like with a different like title, it just meant that it was like the second season or the second tour of it. So I, I thought that it was just like the follow up or like the sequel to F Full Metal Alchemist. So I started watching Full Metal Alchemist 2003, and boy, oh boy, a an eight year old child was not prepared for to watch that fucking show. <laughs> not because it had like anything like I think I got to like the second half of the first like I got to the second half of the second episode before I was like, yeah, now this sh this shit is freaky. I'm out. <laughs> Yeah, full, full Metal Alchemist, like Full Metal Alchemist, has never been a series where they pull where they pull the punches. Okay, I drew the mouse. Just have to make it look futuristic. Nice work. Anyway, yeah, Full Metal Alchemist is not a particularly like, you know, it, it's never it, Full Metal Alchemist is not in, nearly in the realm of fucking around. But the f opening arc of Full Metal Alchemist two thousand and three is an, another league entirely. <laughs> That, at least that was my perspective at the time. I've I, I've seen some shit since then. <laughs> it's like mid to me now. <laughs> yeah.
Yeah, I, I, I was definitely a crybaby as a kid, so I definitely got spooked much easier than I should have. FMA Zero 3 was so good in the first half, and you can obviously tell when it started being told by a man with a Nazi fascination. Oof. Was. You are. Okay, I am still a little bit of a crybaby. That's true. But, you know, I, I think that just means I got a soft heart. That's not necessarily a bad thing. It's just annoying sometimes. I can live with that. Guys ought to be a little bit stupid and stupid and annoying. That's my that's my life philosophy. That's my concept of masculinity. Guys ought to be a little bit stupid and annoying from time to time. <laughs> And naturally, should be allowed to buy as many tools as they want. That those are my those are like the three cornerstones of masculinity for me. <laughs> Everything else is purely coincidental. <laughs> hmm. There we go. I should drink some water. Oh yeah. Anyway, I told you that story so I could tell you this one. That's one of my favorite phrases because it describes half of the reason that I ramble. <laughs> anyway, um, I was looking up some trends on like on like uh, media and entertainment, and naturally it it, it was talking about how the um, how Netflix and all these other live streaming services have shifted their content structure from, you know, just having TV on demand from classical series to making their own original series. I wasn't even here for the story. I mean, you were. I was talking about like uh, my, how how my how um, I stopped watching so much anime and TV shows because like I was talking about like Netflix. I think originally. Anyway. <laughs> Um, the article went on to talk about the fact that, uh, you know, even though you, even though, um, what do you call Amazon and Netflix and all these other kind of like big shot, big name, um, streaming, streaming platforms. Remember when there was just like one streaming platform? <laughs> I did not hear any of that, but I will always talk shit about it. Attack on Titan and, and Full Metal Alchemist 2003. Fair enough. You know, you you are the groups. You know how like most groups have like a designated driver. I feel I feel like you're almost like our group's designated hater. It's a it's an invaluable part of our ecological, of our kind of like friend friendship ecosystem. <laughs> I mean, I'm the only one who can drive. I mean, okay, so you're <laughs> you're multifaceted. That's what you are. Yeah, God, I think that is true, though. I think you are maybe the only one of us that can drive. <laughs> I need to start getting. I need to get my driver's license so I can start one upping you. You can. You ought to be allowed to cut loose every now and again. <laughs> you know, without engaging in drunk driving. <laughs> I am. Mm hmm. Yeah. How does that feel, by the way? <laughs> I don't imagine you have any particularly strong feelings about it, but I imagine it must feel some kind of way. <laughs> uh, collar pop. And when we play games that require someone to drive, you can really tell y'all can't drive for shit. Toaster pop are deemed to stream in a horse dance. Prime example, toast. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let me go get the timer. <laughs> I haven't done one of these in a while, so um, I'm, I'm, I might actually have a little bit of trouble. <laughs> Kicks indoors. Sup? <laughs> hey, Toast, how you doing? Okay, let's see. Uh, let's go for three minutes. Why not? Three-minute timer. Well, he kicked in the door only for it to slam back on his face. What the heck is a horse stance? I'm so glad you asked. All right, hang on. Let me... I got like an ironing board on my floor because I was like ironing my jacket while watching a live stream. Fuck. Get this crap out of the way. 
Okay. I'm so glad I have this redeem because every time that I open it up, I get to explain to somebody new what, what the horse stance is. All right. Where is my browser source? Okay. We can just put that over here. Anyway, I'm so glad you asked what a horse stance is. So, yeah, I'm glad I have this redeem because it, it lets me talk about martial arts stuff. So, in martial arts, there are several stances. I can talk a little bit more about them, but a horse stance in particular is when you is a very wide stance where you have to kind of like stand like this. So I have a redeem where for a measly, cheap, economical five thousand points, you can make me stream for in that stance for an amount of time of my choosing. <laughs> this time I bumped it up for, to three minutes because I want to feel some pain, it, because I think that's the only way it's going to make me feel something. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I'm basically, so right now, I've uh, taken out my chair, I have gotten real low. Oh, speaking about driving, when me and Alex played Fortnite, I was driving the car and Alex was talking shit about me backing into the dead end, only for him to take the wheel and immediately <laughs> crash into a boulder. God. <laughs> That's really funny, actually. <laughs> I love it when, like, I love the comedic timing of somebody going like, here, let me handle this, and then just them immediately messing it up. Not even in a malicious way, but I think it's just, like, very funny that it happens. Skill issue. <laughs> <sighs> yeah, so fun fact. <laughs> Even though the, the horse stance is an anaerobic exercise, which is to say you're not actually doing any kind of like work, so to speak. There, an anaerobic exercise is one where you're not actually... Okay, so if you're like pumping iron, right? If you're doing like bicep curls... That's an, that's, that can be an aerobic exercise because a lot of it is delivering oxygen to your muscles when you while you work. However, an anaerobic exercise <laughs> doesn't allow for the delivery of oxygen, meaning that your muscles just keep getting more tired. So a lot of like exercises like an air chair, um, there's a neck exercise that I'd like to do that's also an anaerobic exercise. Also, the timer's all, uh, the timer is in like 40 seconds, please. <laughs> please. <laughs> Okay, um, right, I, I was work, working on the collar now, um, yeah, so, I forgot what I was talking about, honestly. <laughs> oh yeah, um, streaming services. So a lot of streaming services like Amazon Prime, um, Netflix and everything have shifted away from a business model. Oh, there we go. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Getting out of the horse stance is always the hardest. Uh, okay. <laughs> uh, my ankles. <sighs> my goodness. You've been slacking. <laughs> what do you mean? I went for three minutes. That is 30 seconds longer than my usual amount. I mean, I, I know that doesn't actually sound like much, but like, those are the... In any rope, in exercising, 30 seconds can be approximately seven years. Whatever you say, Rice Boy. I think there was a webcomic at some point called Rice Boy. I, I, I remember reading a webcomic called Rice Boy. I wonder what the creator is up to these days. That's something that happens to me very often, is that I'll remember some kind of obscure web media that I that I like w saw a trailer or read a snippet of at some point, and I just kind of wondered, I wonder what they're up to now. Like, I, I remember... Um, 
I remember I was a big fan of this um, webcomic maker, webcomic creator, Cube Watermelon. Um, I, I, I think she, I think she still goes by she, her pronouns. Um, but yeah, I, I remember th remembering like this one kind of creator called Cube Watermelon. And I was like, I wonder what she's been up to. And lo and behold, she also became a VTuber. <laughs> Good for her, honestly. Uh, turtleneck back. Neck back. It's always funny whenever like a content creator that you that you remember also becomes a VTuber because <laughs> I don't know why it's so funny to me. It's like <laughs> it, uh, it really is impossible for me to describe like why it's so funny to me. I don't know why it's so funny. It just is. It's 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 like we're both it's it's like it's like everyone is a VTuber nowadays. I mean, that's true as well. Like, it's definitely become a very popular thing. Also, I think I'm done with the mouse. Nice. Congrats. Yeah, I'm glad that you. I'm glad that you kind of like got that uh, craving to draw. You have to. You have to pounce on that whenever you can because there's never gonna be a good time to draw stuff. You just kind of have to make time for it. Which is what, that's why I've started. That's why I always do like these live streams, right? Like that's why I talk about it very frequently. That doing these live streams is one of the best things that I've ever done for my art because it gives me like a very kind of loose obligation that theoretically I could back out of at any time. I want to share it with you guys. Um, do you have a Twitter account that you could send to me through Twitch? And then you can post it through there and I can put it up on screen. Because I would love to do that. Okay, and I'm gonna do caller back now. Yeah, nice. Alright, yeah, go go ahead, post that, send it and send it over to me on Twitch, and I will put it up on screen. Okay. Okay, there we go. Oh wait, wouldn't that be more like... No, that's not right. It'd be more like this, for sure. Yeah, it'd be like this. Man, I gotta say... I've become a huge fan of this like lineless lineless thing because like it's just it just feels very easy to me right now. Like I I, I did say I'd get I'd switch to dueling if I got bored, but I'm not feeling like burdened at all. It, it doesn't feel as bad as it did last time, and I do think that that's because I am trying to do it in a more kind of like logical way. Because before when I was trying to do it with my own art style. You know, nothing not nothing wrong with that, but like I don't think my art style, my regular kind of drawing process is suited towards making VTuber models. So kind of adapting like this has helped a lot, I think. Yeah. Modern problems require modern solutions. Yeah. Like I said, there's something w weirdly wholesome about watching like everybody become a VTuber nowadays. It, it, it feels like... How do I put it? There's, not, there's never going to be a, such a thing as a unified VTuber community. I don't, I don't, I, that's, that's something that I think, think, feel like it's just a very obvious statement, but one that needs to be said, that there's never going to be like a, like a one unified... Wait... Ah, shit, I've been drawing that on the wrong layer. All right, we can fix that, though. Hang on, I got an idea. No, no, we're not going to be able to fix that. Shit. I myself even stream up it every five million years or so. Ain't nothing wrong with that. That just means that you're, that you're doing it all at your own pace. Yeah. Yeah. 
Now, once a wise man once said that there is no such thing as a short path to power. That just means that the times that you do stream is just you at your most powerful. And I've made a PNG model and everything. Nice. God, I remember the good old days when I just streamed with a PNG model. I had a lot of fun with that little guy. I love... I, I, <laughs> I make myself all these funny little costume items. And that, that's been a habit since like day one. <laughs> Yeah, it's, uh, PNG tubing is such a nice gateway hobby. Like, honestly, it's it's the best. I'm pretty sure my laptop will explode if I put out a 3D model. I mean, hey, mine too. <laughs> well, no. Um, I remember one time I tried to stream with, like, a... Yeah, God, I love PNG tubers. Right? Honestly, like... I think, like, it's not... I think, like, viewing it in terms of, like, oh, yeah, you know, live 2D model but better than PNG model. I feel like that's a very kind of... Almost, like... Not even insensitive, but almost, like... Short-sighted way of looking at it, because... Nothing funnier than someone losing their fucking marbles and they only have a mouth, a mouth open and closed. Right, right, right. Because, like... The thing is, right, when you have a variety of ways to make your own model, there are going to be benefits and limitations to each one. So I know, like, for example, they have, there's this thing called Honk, which is which you can use to rig PNG tubers to have, like, a, a limited animation and everything. And there are some things that you can only do with PNG tubing that I don't think you can properly do with with with, like, Live 2D. Or at least not communicate as properly. Like, for example, <laughs> I remember for one time that I played Among Us with some of my friends, uh, Toast, I remember that you drew, like, this picture of me, like, fucking dead on the ground with, like, with, like, with, like, with the rice spilling out of my head. And that bit wouldn't have worked nearly as well with, if it was, like, a live 2D model, and I just, like, did that every now and again. Like, there's, like, a certain kind of comedic timing to the kind of, like, snap and movement of PNG tubing that you don't get with Live 2D. Oh, yeah, send it to me through, like, a whisper or something. <laughs> I've got a uh, links disabled. <laughs> I should have probably led with that. Yeah, I, I, I did block links. It, it, it's a, it's a precaution, you see. It's a security measure. You know, I, I I'm already besties with the killer robot. I don't need regular regular bots, kind of just stomping in here and trying to make trying to make my life a living hell. All right, and call her back. Hmm. Okay, so yeah, send it to me whenever you're ready. Uh, I was doing something. Right, I was just, I was gonna keep color blocking this thing out. Actually, you know what? While Derp, while you send me that, I think I am gonna take a quick, quick little break. I'll be right back.
Okay, I'm back. Yeah, sorry. I I thought I heard my. Okay, yeah. Don't don't worry about it. Oh, here we go. Uh. Oh wow, that's really cool. And let me uh put that up on screen here. Yeah, I like it. It reminds me a lot of like um. Yeah, I heard it though. Heard what? Anyway, uh, it reminds me a lot of like uh. <laughs> I don't know how to put it. It reminds me a little bit of like the Daleks from Doctor Who, but also like I don't know how to put it. Like it's got a very kind of like 50 sci-fi feel, which is really cool. Yeah, nice work. I'm, I'm, it, it, you did really good. To a A plus, ten out of ten. Understood the assignment perfectly. All right, let's see here. Do not save. And... What was I doing again? Right, okay. So I think now we can move on to the pants. We should probably move on to the helmet at some point though, like before, before we do that, but I can figure that out after the pants. I don't know. I kind of want to have the helmet be in there. Gonna have to look for now, though. Must do the dishes. Godspeed. Yeah. I don't know what it is about doing the dishes that it's just, like, poisonous to my motivation. It It is for some reason. I can't explain why. Hmm. Boost that, boost that. Yeah, I think we can have like most of the stuff up top be like full opacity and maybe just have the shirt be like limited opacity. Yeah, because so far pretty coherent, I think. You, you can still pretty much tell like what everything is. That's gonna, that's only going to improve once we get the line art going. Yeah, so far I'm having fun. So far I haven't felt the need to. Uh, switch over to another activity, which is good. I, I don't I don't like I don't know what it was about the Hang on triangle sl sleeve triangles. I'm gonna call this slayer Yeah, I don't know what it what happened to me la the last time I tried to do this that I just absolutely like hated every second of it but but somewhere in the between there, I just got really into it for some reason. I don't know, I don't know what's different about it this time. I think I think like I said that I that because I adapted my workflow, it's just much more fun now. I think that that's a super important aspect of it. There we go, just a little off the top. Okay, now then. The pants. Uh, those are gonna have to go on top of the belly layer and on top of the top layer. So those are gonna go around here. So I'm gonna go to put them right here. So I'm gonna put the, you need to start off with the pelvis. What's What is the layer called in that like little diagram I have down there? Uh, core. Okay, we'll call it the core. Oh, wait, I can I can do that as a naming convention then. Core belly and core, th core hips. Okay. We can just kind of like start the outline of the pants all the way across and then worry about it about the details later no wait right we we had to go like hips and everything right okay okay kind of like that Yeah, 
yeah. Oh yeah. Okay, so I was reading about like these different um, types of. Okay, so so we have all heard about like GMO stuff, foods, right? Like, we all know what like a genetically modified apple is and everything. Um, apparently, th there there's one on the way that looks like a that is basically a purple tomato. And when I first took a look at this thing, I thought it was like really gross looking, but it, it on second blush, I actually think it looks kind of cool. Let me pull up a picture and see if I can find what, a picture of this so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Uh, purple tomato. Like it looks gross, but at the same time, it's got like a kind of interesting, like, yeah, here, here's a picture. Like it almost looks like a pomegranate on the inside. Apparently they're supposed to be like super healthy or whatever. Like they they're like chock full of nutrients. Yeah. It really pissed me off to learn that the only major sources of potassium in most people's diets were tomatoes and bananas. Because I hate tomatoes and I'm not too fond of bananas either. <laughs> so learning that like that was like one of the main sort those were the two main sources of potassium in most people's diets really pissed me off. Yeah. It's not that I don't like bananas, I just don't eat them very often. I don't eat fresh fruit in general very often. You know, not because I don't like it, but because it's just a pain in the ass to acquire. Like, the thing is, right, I am, like, when it comes to, like, vegetables and stuff, I am not a picky eater, but I am a lazy eater. <laughs> yeah. Listen, sometimes you just gotta realize that, like, long-term, that in the long-term, cooking just is not worth it that way. You be out here with your two shitty sandwiches? Hey, my sandwiches are not shitty. Alright? They are merely... They are prepared with... They are prepared simply, lovingly, and with limited resources. <laughs> I will say, though, I remember you sent, like, a TikTok... You're so sis. <laughs> All right, not gonna lie. I think that's a first for like an insult for me. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the first time I've heard that one. <laughs> Shockingly enough, that's the first time I've heard that one. <laughs> God. <laughs> Okay, uh, which one do I need to put? Oh, yeah, I think that right here should be good, actually. I just, it's just, like, it's not... I either needed to make it wide enough that, like, it covers the arm, or I need to make it, like, narrow enough that, that it doesn't intersect with the arm. I think narrow. That TikTok really do be like you, though. Yeah, 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 yeah. You, you did send me a TikTok, which is, like, basically this, like, <laughs> really surprisingly well-made, like, I'm gonna call it fan cam. <laughs> Of this dude just making himself a a panini a ham and Swiss panini. <laughs> I don't even think it was it was ham and Swiss. I think it was just like ham and ch and American ch and, and like those shitty craft single American cheddar slices. Craft singles, I would maintain, are not cheese. All right, you talk about your bad foods. You talk about my poor eating habits. At least I'm not at the point where I consider Kraft Singles to be an actual cheese. Alright, I actually do buy blocks of cheese from the supermarket. Like, I buy, like, a big block of Farmer's Marble, which is a blend of American cheddar and mozzarella. Which is made when, like, they don't have... Which was... Oh, what the hell was that? <laughs> I love that shit. mm, -mm. I think I, I was also eating croissant with me and coffee when I saw it, and I was like, ah yes, pabs. Damn, my hand smells of detergent and grease. I also say this when my hand smells of detergent and grease. When you got the cleaning job at 11, but you're at the, at the cookout until 10.59. <laughs> Did I hear some mozzarella? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like mozzarella. Um... There was this one cheese that had like this orange coating on the outside, but it was like kind of like white on the inside. I don't remember what it's called, but I, 
but I really, really like it. I don't remember what the name is. I think it was like some kind of like Monterey Jack or something, but I really like it. Yeah. That being said, I'm not super picky about my cheeses. I'll... Yeah, like I said, I'm not... It's not that necessarily that I'm picky anymore. I think it's just that I... I have, like, very strict standards on, like, time. On, like, dem demands of time on my schedule. <laughs> oh, that's my favorite cheese. What, Monterey Jack? Good choice, good choice. <laughs> Personally, my I like my brie cheese. Mm -hmm. I love feta. <sighs> yeah, we we've got good cheese taste all around out here. I'm I'm happy for that. I'm I really am. All right, so I think the next part here is gonna have to be. What is this is upper leg uh, upper upper leg R. Yeah. I like feta, but like, I like feta cheese, but the thing is, I I almost have like some trauma associated with it because like, back when the pandemic was first starting, right? Um, naturally, like they closed down like the, uh, I, I was still in university when the pandemic first came around. So they, and so naturally they had to close down the university cafeteria, which was bad because my room in particular didn't have a a like kitchenette or anything the second room that i sit the second kind of um university ho housing that i stayed at did have a kitchenette but not the first one so what ended up happening that sounded like you wanted to try to call me names mister <laughs> i put two pieces of bread together and call it a sandwich call me names <laughs> no 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 like listen listen god i wish past <laughs> called you names no listen listen feta is a feta is a fine cheese and you have good taste for liking it. But the problem is, like, when they started giving out, like... So they closed down the university cafeteria at the beginning of COVID. And one of the things that, like, they, they had, like, a choice of meals. Like, they had, like, two meal sets that you could take from every day. One of them was always vegetarian. And sometimes they would have, like, pizza on those sets. And I was like, all right, sure, why not? Things are going to shit. Might as well get myself a nice slice of pizza. But the thing is, right, I think past a certain point, um, the kind of initial pandemic food shortages got them, and they had to make pizza with feta cheese, and that shit did not melt properly at all. Like, like I said, feta is a fine cheese, but it is for sure not a pizza cheese. I already have you and Butter doing that. I can't lose my functional support bag of rice, too. <laughs> no, no. I I try to avoid calling people names. I I just get, I I just try to issue threats of ineffectual violence instead. Ooh, cursed food. Yeah, like I'm not gonna. I'm definitely not gonna say like it was on the level of like Brazilian pizza, but it was not a great scene. There's no fat in it, so that makes sense. <laughs> That explains a lot, actually. I didn't know that about feta. I didn't know that it doesn't have fat in it. So th that explains a lot, actually. So what, it's just like whey protein? Like, what? <laughs> what the fuck is feta made out of then? <laughs> These are some very long legs that I'm giving this girl. Me and my sister constantly joke about making skill cookies. For a moment, I forgot like which one was was the colorful little pe pellet food. Like I thought, I, I thought you said Skittles, and I immediately pictured like colorful pellet food. I'm like, oh yeah, people make Skittle cookies all the time. But then I remembered that no, those are M and M's. You need it though, because you're acting six feet tall when you're five foot three. <laughs> I'm starting to think that she's actually going to start making them someday. I mean. The thing is, right, some cursed food combos actually kind of work. So I know, like, um, I remember my school cafeteria served chili powder chocolate chip cookies one time. And you would, like, at first blush, you, you know, you hear that. I love it when people change M&M for Skittles. <laughs> In what context? Anyway, um, I tried chili, pep chili powder 
chocolate chip cookies one time, and I like them better than normal chocolate chip cookies. I haven't had too much many chances to make them, but I do like them quite a bit. For chaos. <laughs> mm-hmm. I can respect that. I should drink some water. One of these days, I'm gonna be able to say, I'm gonna take a sip of water. Or I'm gonna take a drink of water. The way I normally do. And it's gonna show up on the, on the closed captions properly. <laughs> like, it hasn't gotten it right once since I installed that thing. Like, I'm just gonna say, I'm gonna take a squip sip of water and like, It'll come out with, like, I'm gonna go to Utah. Ah, <laughs> uh, you know. The technology is always ahead of the funding. That's how it always is. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Funnily enough, one time I... While I was, like, testing out the Texas speech, or... not, it's, I keep calling it Texas speech. The closed captions. While I was testing out the closed captions... I was making just like random mouth sounds, and it recognized bo 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 as in the manga. Yeah, look, there it goes. <laughs> I never actually managed to get into that manga because it was just so profoundly stupid that even I couldn't get into it. <laughs> but, but I do respect what it was going for. <laughs> Okay, and then there's lower leg R. It always tickles me pink whenever like some obscure, some it's not even necessarily obscure. Whenever some anime term that I sling around gets it gets recognized properly by the text of speech. Like I remember when I when I brought up like the Sharingan in the Resident Evil Four playthrough, it actually recognized the phrase Sharingan, and I was like, holy shit, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, I like technology. I, I wish it wouldn't spy on me so much, but I like technology. <laughs> There's no such thing as something good without a little something bad to go with it. That's how it's always. That's how it always is, right? Yeah, well, at least, I think, like, you know, it's very easy to be pessimistic about the, the state of surveillance in modern technology. But I think, like, as long as you're not just complacent about it, I think you're already doing more than enough. I'm gonna have to go play some games. Have a good one. All right, you too, Leo. Uh, oh, did you end up finding your the screws that you were looking for? I hope so. If not, well, better luck next time. Okay, and then with the needed eraser right here. Gotta explain that to you in call one day. <laughs> Alright, cool. Yeah, I, I think you will because I think I think you were trying to go for some kind of bit that I didn't understand initially, and I I, I think I must have thrown off your entire joke cadence. But yeah, I, I, in any case, you know, screws or not, I hope you have a good day out there, man. All right, have a good evening. Enjoy your enjoy your night. Ah, purple tomato jump scare. Your two Facebook memes to understand. Uh, uh, I don't think I can deny that actually. There's something just the thing is right. A lot of people should talk Facebook memes for being like outdated or you know not particularly high quality, which is more than a valid criticism. But I think there's something like. There's like a sort of sincerity to them that you don't get anywhere else. Yeah, like yes, the 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 weird five thousand follower account making this mini meme likely has no soul and no concept of like anything that's too modern. But at the same time, they are making this with their with like sincerity in their hearts to some extent. I can respect that.
two of my friends are actively on Facebook, so and it's so weird seeing them and send a meme that's like years old. <laughs> oh yeah. I feel like so fun fact, um when animals in the ocean die, their corpses don't like disintegrate in the water. They have to go somewhere. And in particular, uh, whenever a whale dies in the ocean, that's actually a very important event called a whale fall. <clears throat> and what ends up happening is that when a whale dies in the middle of the ocean, it ends up creating sustenance for like six billion different ecosystems underwater because there's just so much of so much whale, and there's and at the bottom of the ocean there's just so many creatures that depend on whale fall to survive as species. What I'm trying to say here is that fa is that <laughs> Facebook memes are kind of like those ecosystems at the bottom of the ocean that feed on the corpses of memes. These are no longer mere dead horses. They are horses that have been actively decomposing for decades. And they have finally ended up at the fi at the last entom entomological stop, so to speak. I was going to name this layer something. I forget what. Actually, I don't need a new layer because I need to repaint the existing layer. Hang on. I don't know what's happening anymore. I don't think it's letting me do the undo key. It's weird. Anyway. Um, yeah, that aside, um, God, deep sea ocean stuff is so cool and also so extremely terrifying. <laughs> you will hear the most fucked up shit in your life from, that happens in the ocean. And then you're just like, wow, nature is beautiful. And because like any other reaction is just kind of giving into the horror of it. <laughs> I don't know how to put it, like... Sometimes you learn something that's just so terrifying that you kind of like j just have to kind of shrug and carry on with your day. Because otherwise it's just going to haunt you for life. Like if you give it the satisfaction of a reaction, then you're going to be well and truly ruined. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's 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 a lot of the case for both deep sea ocean stuff and like deep space stuff. Like, if you've ever seen like a stray black hole or a stray comet or something like that, I don't. I think it might be called a stray star or a stray comet. I'm not sure. But yeah, if you, if you read about like like if you hear about like just a precarious amount of what ifs going on in the universe at the same time, <clears throat> you start to get a little bit of existential dread. <laughs> I need to make this, like, very, like, 3D-ish. That's something I need to keep out an eye out for as well, in that, like, I tend to draw things very two-dimensionally, which isn't, again, isn't necessarily a bad thing. That's just kind of, like, my art style sometimes. Like, unless I'm using a 3D model, um, I tend to draw things, like, very flat. And, and again, that's almost like a style choice, because, you know, I, I like comics. I, that's kind of, like the way that I started to learn to love drawing. And those always have like very flat stuff sometimes. Not necessarily, but you know what I mean. They, there's like a certain style in comics that do, just does not have like... So like for example, instead of like doing like a curve like this to show off like the ankle, I'd normally just do it like this. And again, not necessarily a bad thing. It's a, it's, it's a, it's a matter of like duty of care almost. Like, how much effort do you want to spend on this? And usually my my answer is not too much effort. 
because not only because like you know i have to kind of maintain and keep the streams to a reasonable amount of time i don't like doing multi multi stream art too too much because it i just like feel get bored after a little while you know unless it's like a particularly meaningful project like this or something where i'm actively challenging myself like with the valhalla piece um, I try to avoid like really long-term, long-form projects because I just know those aren't my strong suit. You know, it's not—it's not even a matter of like, you know, stepping outside of your comfort zone. It's a matter of playing to your strengths and understanding what makes you have fun when you're making stuff. Yeah, if you're not having fun, then you know. Not everything about the creative process is going to be fun. And that's just the way it is. It's not always going to be fun. But if you're actively pursuing something that you just are not, are not having fun with, or, you know, you're also... Oh, that's, like, very noticeable. Anyway, as I was saying, if you're just, like, trying to pursue something you're just not having a whole lot of fun with, to the extent that you're actively starting to hate what you're doing, I feel like you almost need to really take a step back and, and try to think about like how you're approaching the process because there has to be a way that you can have fun with it. You know, I'm not going to say you need to stop doing it. I'm just saying there has to be a way that you can have fun with it. And that's kind of what, what today was about. I'm, I'm, I'm experimenting with this new style and I'm having fun with it. I'm having a great time just talking about and just shooting the breeze and just trying to get this done. Because... I am, you know, I understand that not everything, like, it, it's much easier for me in this style to let everything kind of fall into place the way it does in Life 2D. You know, that's not true with my normal style. With my normal style, I have to have, like, a very kind of um, definite. <sighs> Normally, I pride myself on my line work. Let's start with that. I, I like to pride myself on my line work. I like to think that it's very dynamic. I like to think that it's very cool, very clean. But that's not helpful in the context of making a Live 2D model. But I also don't want to abandon it. So I've decided to kind of like uh, almost defer it, you know? I can do the cool line art later, but for now, what's important is actually getting the objects and parts onto the canvas split up in the proper way. So, so this isn't a nightmare later. <laughs> because look at this. In the... I mean, we've taken much longer, I think. But that might also be, be because I'm talking more. But, it, you know, with the original model, we spent, like, so much time on the face, so much time on each sleeve, so much time on each part. Right now, we're just kind of, like, going faster. And that's super, super important because an important part of, like, getting better is almost, like, failing faster, if that makes sense. That's a phrase that I've always liked. Fail faster. <laughs> Does it, It's not fail less. It's not fail better. It is fail faster. Nobody likes failure. Failure isn't fun. It, it, you know, no matter how you slice it, if you see an outcome as a failure, then no matter how much good comes from it, you're still going to be frustrated to some extent. Hang on, I gotta like... Okay, I actually think I might have to merge this with lower leg R, so I'm just not going to give it a name just yet. But, you know, even if that is true, what you can do is instead of failing better or... I mean, there's also the way, a way you can fail better. But instead of, like, just trying to fail better or trying to put a positive spin on failure, trying to deny yourself those emotions, it's much more validating and much more useful, I think, if you fail faster. Now, you don't take failure out of the equation, you just make it less impactful to both your own ego and to your creative process. Because not only are you learning more by failing faster, you're also le giving yourself less time to be down in the dumps. You're giving yourself, like, it, it's like a low risk, high reward thing almost. Because like, you're learning things little by little, but at the same time, because you're not super, super invested into it, it's easy to forgive yourself for the mistakes you make if you're if you have a problem with that you know if you're someone who has like difficulty forgiving themselves for mistakes then that kind of philosophy of failing faster getting over it faster getting past your mistakes 
can be something that's really liberating. That that's what I found at least in my experience. You know, you know, to me, to me, fail faster. I, I think it is all definitely a matter of perspective, though, because like I know some people will be like, some people need to hear that failure is occasionally healthy. But some people, but you know, for people who understand that already, it can be annoying to have all this effort put into something and still not get something meaningful out of it, and something being somebody being like, "Don't worry, it's okay, you'll get it next time," because you still put a lot of care and effort into it. You know, that's not going to go away just because you... somebody gave you a pep talk. And it sounds mean, but... that's... That, again, that is just kind of my perspective on it. I'll drink some water. We are still O for O. <laughs> not what I said at all, but um, zero for zero on the correct guess guess of what I'm saying with the water thing. <clears throat> oh yeah, speaking of faster, that's a good thing to hear though. Mm, that's true, yeah. Yeah, I mean, definitely sometimes you need a pep topic, sometimes you need, like, a advice to move forward. Everybody needs different things at different stages. It's all about, it's all about trying to remain tactful, I think. God. <laughs> um, <laughs> speaking of speed, um, I, I read earlier that apparently... This is from a study in like 2015, I think, or like from an article in 2015. Apparently, we can hear faster than we can see. Like, apparently you can hear faster than you can see, and that is to me completely fucked up because light travels faster than sound. So logically speaking, we should be able to see faster than we can hear. But apparently, like... Okay, so apparently, like, our eyes... Believe it or not, the things that let you behold the world around us are actually complete, very delicate and complex organ organisms, or organs. And they have an equally complex nervous array within your body. Which is neat, you know, that's useful. But th at the same time, it means that when you see something, there is a much longer delay until you can actually, like, see it, if that makes sense. Like when you see something, if, if you hear a gunshot and see a muzzle flash at the same time, you're going to hear the gunshot first before you see them. No, that's not a... like every time I hear it, like it came from a scientific study, so it's not necessarily wrong. Maybe I'm just misunderstanding it. You know, I, I think it may be possible as well that the article I read it from just misquoted it because there's no goddamn way it makes sense. Because, like, it, like I said, if you see a gunshot, like if you see somebody fire a gun, you're going to see the muscle flash before you see hear the sound pop off. But I think that's maybe more of like a, at a distance, right? No, that makes sense because, like, okay, right, okay, I, I'm starting to reconcile this again. <laughs> okay, so light travels faster than sound. This is immutable fact that I am unwilling to budge on. However, that's only over, like, a short amount of distance. When we're talking about, like, the way that you, like, receive input to your brain, however, that might be a different story. So, like, you know, if, if, you, if you see, like, thunder crackling, like, you're going to, assuming you're not, like, standing right where it hit, you're going to see the flash before you hear the rumble. But that's only because, like, the thunder is, like, a fair distance away. If it's like a, if you're like basically standing right next to the thing, that might not be so meaningful. Okay, so then what I think, so essentially what I read, going, going back to the point that I was trying to make, apparently you can hear things faster than you can see them because of the kind of difference in nervous arrays in your body. Because your eyes have a much more complicated array of nerves compared to your ears. Boom. There. I... <laughs> I did it. 
God, that, that took a lot of effort to speak to, considering how simple of a concept it should theoretically be. Okay. Um, actually, uh, hang on. Let me merge these two together. And let me, like, boost the opacity on these. There we go. Yeah, um... I think this is a good place to, cut, to end things here for now, because most of the symmetrical stuff has been taken care of. All that's left is the shoes, and I think I'm gonna do those, like, my normal way, because... You don't really need that much... Like, the reason that I did these huge, much bigger things in this kind of like a... Ooh, hang on, I see some something weird going on here. What the... Oh, it might... Okay. Okay, I see what happened here. Anyway, um... Yeah, the, the main reason that I did it in this, like, lineless art style is because it's much easier to do these bigger symmetrical pieces when I don't have to think about the line art as well. But now that we're kind of moving on to the more kind of like uh, asymmetrical pieces, um, or, you know, for the shoes, which are going to be one layer anyways, I think we can kind of go back almost... We can kind of stop using the simplified amount so the simplified method so much. There's still a lot of work to do on this thing, but I enjoyed myself pretty immensely this time around. I, like, you know, maybe it was just like the first, it's like almost like the opposite of beginner's slug. It was like beginner's burden. <laughs> you know, like now that, I, now that I've been like inoculated against it, I, I can survive it much more easily. But yeah, I think we're going to end things here for today. Boom, I am back in my little room. I really got to like, hang on. I'm gonna move. Oh, I'm gonna move the visual novel esque text text box like down a down here to my desk so that you can actually see the chat box. Whoa! Now I'm over here. Now I'm over here. Okay, that's that's enough of that. All right, let's see if anybody's streaming so that we can uh, raid somebody. Uh, Highland Skull is do is also doing some art, so let's go say hi to them. Alright, um, so tomorrow I will be playing a little bit of House Flipper, which is going to be a lot of fun. And on Saturday I will be reworking some of my emotes, and hopefully making some ways so that you can access them more easily through Better TV. Um, yeah, in the meantime, I hope you guys have a great rest of your week, and I will see you all on Friday. Later.